it was Kirishima Rovin's debut episode. That's right, she makes a grand appearance. Plus, we got more London mystery and a possible link between the unnamed purple female character and Goha. All while setting up a two versus one duel with Yudis' life possibly, and maybe quite literally, hanging in the balance. Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton and today we're here to talk about episode 21 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush anime series. A really good episode that helps to expand more of the plot while also explaining a few details and updating the opening slightly. So let's start off with the opening as we got a small update showcasing more up-to-date ace monsters replacing the ace monster of Kawi Tell and Misoko, aka Flatwood. And of course, Manya's monster is gone as well. We now instead have showcasing Red Boot, Joint Tech Triceratops, and Manabu's new dragon, making it so that he has two ace monsters in the same opening. Plus, we also have yet another silhouette monster introduced, which looks to be Rovin's ace, based on the kind of guitar elements that we see accompanying the silhouette. I thought it was rather odd though that we do still get to see Meek-chan in the opening, making me believe that maybe Chupataro might appear and kind of get involved with the story. I get why we still see Requiem, because obviously Zawaijo is going to be an important character moving forward, but still Meek-chan surprised me a little bit. In all honesty, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a bandit in disguise, waiting to get revenge on Rovin for being more popular than Meek-chan. Now then, on to the episode itself, as we go to the Goha HQ building in search for Udius, and we see a close-up of a person sitting in an office chair wearing a long-sleeve burgundy jacket, just like the one we see the no-named girl with purple hair wearing throughout the series so far. So could this be implying that she's a member of Goha? Or is she simply just working there as like a part-time employee? I think it's more likely that she's actually a member of Goha simply because of these facts. If she's sitting down in an office chair, then it means she's a bit more important and she's not just some regular staff member. Like how would she get in there? Plus, we still don't know her name yet as of this episode, episode 21, so it's possible that they're keeping the, her name a mystery because she's related to Goha. Or, we actually see her interact with London in the episode that London goes to UTS to actually, um, you know, ask UTS and give them that mission. And, we know that Goha Yuna is, you know, in connection with Kirishima Rovin. So, wouldn't it make sense if another Goha is also in connection with another Kirishima in the form of London? As a side note though, I could be wrong, but wasn't the Goha answer machine message the same voice actor that voiced Kaizo? Like, again, I could be wrong, but it sounded very much like Kaizo's voice when Yumu and Yuhi were hearing the kind of sorry nobody's home message. Now then, you just going off on his own makes sense, and it goes along in a way of showing how important his dual disc is, and how important rush dueling is to him. Like I've said before, you just wanted to use rush dueling as a kind of peaceful method for stopping war slash conflict, and without it, he can't achieve that, nor could he bring peace to Valgir. Udius has never been the brightest tool in the shed. But seeing him crawling through the alien area, where, again, he doesn't have gravity to move properly, just shows that passion and that desire to get his dual disc back. And obviously it shows how important it is to him. To add to this point, I really liked how it wasn't his loss that hurt him the most, as he understood that losing to something you've never seen before is kind of an okay thing. Although you would expect a warrior who has been in battle many times before to be able to adapt to an unfamiliar situation. But this is dueling, so maybe it's kind of different. However, I feel like Udius isn't sad about losing the duel, 
but more so losing the dual disc and also putting Yuumu and Yuhi, which are his friends who have been so kind to him, in a difficult situation because they lost all their rush battle points. Still though, the whole kind of conversation between Yuhi and Yudius, I thought was a very wholesome segment and I'm glad they kind of introduced it because it again further strengthened the bond between the two characters. I can see Yudius actually showing up and not being that t-shirt that we see hanging up above the character's heads and then rematching Goha Yuna, but not using his red dual disc. Instead, he has to borrow a dual disc from somebody else and feeling unsure about kind of dueling with this sort of new dual disc. But ultimately, he would win, get his normal dual disc back, which is also his treasure, and, you know, we'll proceed with the story moving forward. Side note, that t-shirt probably belonged to one of the bandits and was designed after someone saw Yudius dueling in the Golosseum. Because let's be honest, Yudius' alien form looks really cool and amazing, so why wouldn't you want to market it? Speaking of the Golosseum, Kaninko, is she a bandit? The reason why I say that is because those legs that we see walking around the uh, castle look very familiar to her lobster style design. Although, does she even have legs? I've never actually seen them. Like, she always looks like she's hovering above the ground. Still though, just something I noticed, might be wrong. My name is Rovin, as you can see. I will play this guitar and claim my victory. Kirishima Rovin has arrived, and first off, her design looks incredible. She has this country yet magical-like vibes being presented with her design, which is backed up by her having an acoustic guitar, which again kind of fits into the whole theme that we have of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush, where things look kind of dated, so to speak. They're less modern. And plus, she has a witch's hat. And in the preview, we see this kind of like starry effect overlay, kind of with her characters, giving off that magical slash celestial vibe along with her. As well as having a really good design, she's also very smart, as it's revealed that she created the Rush Battle system after stealing and analysing the MIK data ring which allows people to kind of move in that gravity. That's why when you run out of points on your Rush Battler system, you no longer have the ability to walk in the intense gravity that the alien residency area has. Now this might not have been Rovin's doing. She might have actually gotten Goha Yuna using Goha tech to kind of make these things. But if not, then, you know, she's super smart. So yeah, she's got a brilliant design, She's smart and also she's highly confident in her own skills as she challenges both Odo twins at the same time, getting us a 2v1 duel. A 2v1 rush duel, I should add. Now this is really exciting, so I hope we get to see a quick explanation of the rules and then more lore about Rovin's character and finally, some great dueling action spread across this whole interaction between the groups. There was a booster pack that was shown before the episode, and this kind of circulated around online, and it was Rovin having red hair and red eyes, which is very reminiscent and similar to Roman's character in Sevens, where she had her berserk mode and her eyes turned red in that. The fact that both are a Kirishima and both have very similar designs and a musical element does add more links to each character. I think it's obvious that during the duel, Rovin will use an equip spell card against the Odo twins, making her more of a threat during the duel. Because I can't see Goha Yuna having an equip spell while also, while also sorry, idolizing Rovin for being so strong, courageous, brilliant in every single way, and not having a powerful equip spell herself. Because I believe that Rovin has to be stronger in terms of dueling style than Goha Yuna. And we know that Goha Yuna currently is one of the strongest characters in Go Rush. I think it would be awesome seeing Rovin's ace monster get like a new guitar or a new musical instrument when equipped with an equip spell card. On the topic of equip spells, I think it's really cool seeing how no one knew about their existence in Go Rush. Because 
with this information, with the information as well that the characters believe that once you use a spell or trap card they go straight to the graveyard, this opens up the possibility for in the future to introduce continuous traps and use that method as a way of making a character stronger and catching our heroes off guard. Plus, I like the fact that equip spells aren't something new that's going to overcomplicate the format of rush dueling, but it will also help to make archetypes more powerful, evenly. And by that I mean it's not going to give too much favoritism to one particular archetype, making it so that everyone has to use that one archetype in order to kind of keep up to date and be as powerful as they can possibly be. Moving along now though to London's character, as the show continues to build up the mystery surrounding him even more. If the person in the Go Hot building is the no-named purple haired girl that we've seen throughout the show, then this could add to the reason as to why he was interacting with her before offering UTS their mission. Plus, we know now that he's gone somewhere completely off the radar because nobody knows where he's to. UTS can't get hold of him for payment and Manya has been left with all of the annoying management work because he's gone off the radar with her. As a side note though, the kind of wholesome interactions between Manya and Yumu, I really thought was a great element to the episode and I'm glad they introduced that. Now my question is though, did London know about Gohard Unit's obsession with Rovin and order UTS to find Gohard Yuna so that it would lead them slash him to Rovin, allowing him to see her once again. The two share the Kirishima name and both are human. Because let's be honest, does London seem like a skillful enough duelist to be able to earn the macho rank? Because he certainly wouldn't want to mess with the macho gate if he, you know, isn't that great of a duelist. And maybe after observing UTS's group and their dueling skills, you know, against the like of Meek Chan, like the duel against Suwaijo, like the duel against Manya, London has experienced duels from UTS in where they've overcome the odds and been strong in doing so. So he probably thought they would be able to make it to macho rank thus have more of a chance to lead him to his real target in Rovin. Honestly, I've got no idea, but I'm loving this added layer of mystery to the character and the series in general, making me a little bit more excited to see London when he next appears, which is something I didn't actually expect to be saying from this show. Now, who else thought the Manabu was looking like a father figure to UTS while he was on the train? This was a really sweet moment from this character because he's a guy that likes to act like he doesn't care but we all know he certainly does. Although seeing Yudis' ship with watery eyes was a really hard thing to watch throughout this episode because it was just so cute but then you really want to help them find Yudis because, you know, why wouldn't you? Plus seeing all of Yuumu's expressions in this episode, whether that was her showing her determination, her teasing Yuhi, or even trying to get help from the Jersey Devils in acting kind of cute and innocent, I thought was great for her character, as it added a lot of fun and entertaining moments. It also added a bit more depth to her character by showing her range of personality. Also, most of those segments were, again, just entertainment, so I'm happy to see it. Now I think that just about does it for me on this review for this episode. Overall, I very much enjoyed this episode and I can't wait to see what happens next with this 2v1 duel against Rovin and the Odo Twins. Rovin doesn't seem very evil, so to speak, but I guess obviously the main thing is the Twins think they're going to try and save Udius and we need to get that kind of clear up as to why Rovin's there. We need to learn about the dual disc. We need to learn about why Yuna has Seven's Road Magician. We need a lot of kind of questions answered. And hopefully we'll get that in the next three or four episodes. So yeah, let me know your thoughts about this episode in the comments down below. I'm excited to see what happens moving forward. Hope you are too. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Hit like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Have a great day. I like it all. Mark Goodbye.